Hi, everybody. Welcome to Business Computing Weekly, episode number 364, recorded Saturday, July the 21st, 2012. We're talking about Microsoft Office 2013. And um, we've got some uh, viewer questions and i got some commentary on that. And I think some things you're going to find pertinent, especially if you own a small business and you're looking to uh, maybe save a little bit of money on upgrading. Anyway, any rate, we'll get right to that. But we are sponsored by GFI Software. And they've got a new release of GFI LandGuard. Now, this is one of the best network scanning, vulnerability uh, assessment, and uh, patch products out on the market. That's what companies buy this thing for. And thousands of companies throughout the world depend on LandGuard to keep their networks safe and secure. There's a new version, 2012, and it addresses a problem for companies that have uh, multiple locations and they're trying to scan and uh, remediate issues throughout maybe all the various uh, network segments that are out there. Or they're trying to conserve some bandwidth. Now you can designate an agent in another location as a uh, patch, uh, relay patch uh, management tool and therefore freeing up bandwidth over your network. This is really cool. This is something uh, customers have been asking for. You can learn more about LandGuard by contacting frugalbrothers.com and uh, we'll be happy to talk to you about it. We also have some exciting specials coming up uh, with GFI. But at any rate, I wanted, uh, there's so much information to cover here. I thought we'd, we better just skip the uh, intro, which I need to work on anyway. I'm not satisfied with my intro at all. Um, so uh, I think the, the fellow who did our last intro, Steelheart, did a wonderful job. The one I created, not so good. It's just not my talent, I guess. But we'll get that straight now. We're also available, by the way, as a podcast, uh, audio-only podcast on iTunes or Podomatic. We're right there. And, of course, you can find the video uh, as well on iTunes or also, of course, as you're seeing it now, on YouTube. We always appreciate if you like our videos, at plus one and share it, and we love to hear your comments as well. Our show is devoted to small business technology, and a critical piece to a, of technology to a small business is going to be what? It's going to be a office productivity suite. And so I've been getting questions and talking to people about Office 2013, and you know the, the preview was released last Monday. This is Microsoft's Cash Cow, it is their 800 pound gorilla piece of software. And normally, more times than not, it's the first piece of business software a company buys after their operating system. So, this is really, really an important announcement. In about every three years, Microsoft updates Office. We had version 2007, we had uh, version 2010, and now we're looking at version 2013, which uh, is codenamed Office 15. So one question I've been receiving frequently is, when is this going to be released? And the answer is, to the best we can determine, February of next year, about four months after general availability of Windows 8. That's when we will see Office 2013 released. Next question we've received, uh, will Office 2013 run okay on uh, XP? Because we like XP, we want to stick with XP. The answer is no, it will not. It will not run with XP or Vista. The system requirements are Windows 7 or Windows 8. So keep that in mind. So what's going on here? Well, Microsoft is trying to displace Google Apps in the enterprise. And they've been running a, a big fight there with Google to be uh, with their, uh, on, their cloud-based productivity suite so called Google Apps. You've probably heard of uh, Gmail, and you've heard of Google Docs, and you've uh, heard of some of the other tools, uh, their presentation software, their uh, word processing program, all hosted in the cloud. There's no software to buy. And if you've got less than 10 users, you can get to Google Apps uh, for free. And if you got over 10 users, then you would get the paid edition, which is $50 per year, per user, or $5 per month. And it's a smoking good deal. I use it myself right here at Frugal Brothers. I'm not that heavy duty on Office productivity tools. There's all the features I need. And I think for 80% of small businesses are works just fine in Google Docs. 
but there are times when you may have to have more advanced formatting or things that only Office can provide that Google Docs does. In that case, it makes sense to have a copy of Office. So what's going on here uh, as far as this Office 365 thing? If you're, you're probably seeing the two mixed together a lot now. Office 365, Office 2013, what's going on? Well, to Office 365 is the brand name of what was formerly known as BPOS or BPOS stood for Business Productivity Online Suite. And now it is essentially Microsoft Exchange's hosted online link, SharePoint <coughs> as well, excuse me. But now Office is also coming out with a, or Microsoft's coming out with a subscription-based service as a way to also obtain Microsoft Office 2013. So that's kind of a way of looking at it. Now it's, it's taking the Office 365 and incorporating uh, of some uh, version of Office for people, except for the home premium version of Office 3, or uh, yes, Office 365 Home Premium, which does not include the hosted Exchange link or SharePoint. I mean, home users typically don't need those things. So th that begs the question, well, will I still be able to buy a box copy of Office 2013? The answer is yes. However, I would not be surprised if this may not be the last packaged retail version of Office you'll be able to get a perpetual license for. I kind of, kind of strip over that word perpetual. All right. And we'll get into the reasons behind that a little bit later. But it has been announced that, yes, you'll be able to get Office 2013 in a retail box. However, Microsoft is hoping for something a little bit different, and that is that you take one of their four different Office 365 subscriptions available and use it that way. So it's going to be available in a business, consumer, education, and government editions. And if you use the Office 365 subscription model, you'll log into your portal, your customer portal, and you'll be able to download a runtime installer that will start bringing down, pulling down Office and putting on your machine as a subscription. That's important to know. But it's a subscription that will allow you to install it on f up to five PCs. So you can't go get a box copy of Office 2013 and install on five different PCs. It's one PC per license. But if you have the subscription, you have up to five. Now there was kind of a big brouhaha if you were a Mac user as to whether or not uh, Office 2013 would be available for Mac. Well. The, the, here's the short version. Yes, but not Office two thir uh, 2013. It's still going to be Office for Mac 2011 with a uh, with a, 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 a patch or an, a little bit of an update to it that will allow it work with SkyDrive. Initially, it was reported that Microsoft was not going to include the Mac version of Office as part of the 365 subscription. However, Microsoft has corrected that to the press. Yes, you'll be able to do that. That's good news. Um, again, the system requirements are Windows 7 or, 7, uh, or 8. And yes, as part of Office 365, you can install up to five PCs. Now, one cool thing, if you use the, uh, the subscription service, if you're working on a PC that doesn't have Office on it, and you maybe want to use Word or PowerPoint or whatever, you can log into your portal and begin to stream the full application to your PC and start using it before uh, the application is installed. So that's very, very uh, cool. It's uh, a remote version of the, the Microsoft Office software. So let's talk a little bit about the subscription plans. There's going to be Office 365 Home Premium. Now this is aimed at home users. And this plan lets you install Office uh, 2013 up to five PCs and get an additional 20 gigabytes of online storage on SkyDrive. So you're not going to be using Exchange. You're not going to be using Outlook or uh, the Link or the SharePoint because you know you're as a, uh, as a home user. Um, there's going to be Office 365 Business Premium Edition. Now this will also include hosted email. But with this, you get Word, PowerPoint, Excel, Outlook, OneNote, Access, 
Publisher, Infopath, and Link. So you get quite a bit for the Small Business Premium. Remember, it's up to 10 users. Then there's Office 365 Pro Plus. Now, with this plan, allows you basically to go over this 10 user limit up to 25 users. Again, with five installations of Office per user. Very, very cool. And finally, Office 365 Enterprise, which takes all caps off users. You have as many of them as you like. And of course, it comes with Exchange Online, SharePoint, archiving and legal compliance capabilities. SharePoint for sharing and managing your documents and Link Online, which if you're not familiar with Link, uh, is their instant messaging pro uh, product for business. It's a little bit different than uh, Microsoft Messenger. So it's uh, uh, quite a bit improved over that. So what's new with Office 2013? Well, one is, I, I, I'm not going to include any pictures. There's plenty out there available on the web. You can download the evaluation copy yourself. But essentially, here's what you can expect. When you boot it up, uh, the arrow glass effect's pretty much gone. Now it's more of a flat, uh, white, very metro-looking application. Uh, so the arrow glass is kind of gone there. It does retain the ribbon interface that people either love or hate on Office. Kind of a subtle use of color to differentiate the different applications. Uh, one thing that's new is it's going to take and kind of combine your various cloud services with your online accounts. For example, uh, your Windows Live ID, which is now your Microsoft account, they just kind of changed the name of it, can be associated, will be associated with your SkyDrive account with Office 365 Home Premium, for example. That's kind of cool. <clears throat> so the idea there is to begin simplifying this whole process. Now it introduces what's called the Start Experience. Now this is essentially a screen where you can choose the Office application you want to use, access recently used documents, as well as you know your file print and all that sort of thing. So it's a beginning to work with Office, a starting point to work with Office and experience, as Microsoft refers to it as. There's going to be online picture supports for like Bing, Flickr, and so forth. A resume reading feature, which will bookmark where you left off at in a document. There's going to be alignment guides for positioning images, charts, graphs, that kind of thing in your Word and PowerPoint presentations. So these are the distribution model of Office is majorly new. The look and feel of Office is majorly new. There are, of course, there are other features. These are some of the highlights of Office 2013. Now, I want to make some final points here. Again, I'm a small business guy. And does it make sense to upgrade and all these kind of things? Look, let's cut to the chase. Why is Microsoft doing this? Well, most importantly, it's all about recurring revenue. Recurring revenue, period, period, period. The days of us business people buying a box copy of Office, installing it, and hanging on to it forever and ever and ever is going to go bye-bye. Microsoft don't like people like us. They want you on that upgrade path. And by golly, they're going to make sure that at some point it's just not going to be available to us. As I said earlier, I believe this may be the last time you'll be able to buy a retail coffee copy of Office with a perpetual license. In which case, if you want to use the 800-pound gorilla, if you want to use the gold standard in Office productivity, you're going to subscribe and become a monthly subscriber or annual subscriber to Microsoft Office 365. Next, Microsoft, uh, as I said, is winning us off the, the uh, box software with perpetual license and moving the subscription model. I just said that. Uh, my bad. Microsoft has lost some very, this is an important point, I think. Microsoft has been watching very carefully and combating very intensely clients that have considered or considering moving to Google Apps. Google says over 5 million enterprises now use Google Apps. That's a lot. Google, Microsoft has lost some important clients to Google Apps. Google Apps, of course, is a hosted productivity solution where no software is necessary to be installed. Microsoft makes its living on selling individual licensed software. So this is how they're going to fight back, giving you that cloud-based solution, but yet still retaining 
all the functionality of Office in kind of as this hybrid uh, full client download linked to the cloud distribution model. This is the way they're trying to retain their advantage. Now here's the thing, and I think this is important to also remember, by moving Office to the cloud as much as possible, Microsoft will be better positioned to expand the reach of Microsoft Office to other mobile devices more easily. Okay, if you can do a cloud-based kind of thing and get people using cloud-based and hosted versions of Office, then that's going to make it that much easier to deploy in the future. Recently, I had a discussion with a friend of mine about predicting the future in tech. And, of course, one of the things we both predict is the end of the retail box copy of software, pretty much going away. But I think more importantly, the future is about screens, displays, whether it's a phone, a tablet, smart glass, some type of uh, electronic surface device, it's all about the screen and not so much as about the underlying hardware. In fact, I venture to say at some point hardware will become irrelevant. You've got to be in that ability to distribute the data and the software that people want to use anywhere, anytime, anyhow. And that is, I think, where the future of technology is going. The writing is on the wall. The, the future is in screens no matter what form factor and the ability to deliver to those screens. As a small business owner uh, with less than 10 users, I think the first thing you should always look at is Google, is Google Apps. That's my opinion. Unless, of course, you have a highly specialized need that these apps will not uh, work with. That doesn't mean your entire organization has to be on Office, only those who would require features not available in uh, Google uh, Google Docs could have a license of Office. Think about that for a minute. If you're not careful, you're going to find that your monthly credit bar card bill is going to be full of subscription fees, web hosting, sales and marketing tools, um, hosted email. It goes on and on and on. So be careful how you spend your IT dollars. Make sure you're getting the best possible deal for your money. And sometimes, on-premise solution may still be the most economical thing you can buy over the long haul, especially if you're predicting growth. Now, I'm not saying that a host uh, Office 365 is a bad deal because it's certainly not considering the initial outlay to buy multiple copies of Office can be very expensive. Uh, or if you're looking at the Office 365 uh, host exchange and all that, buying a server, server operating system exchange and all that can be very, very expensive. But you also have to keep into mind these host services, they're not free. And the bills will add up. Slowly you will get creep, uh, uh, what I call subscription creep. And you'll have some startling high bills. Remember, for every new hire, is yet another paid subscription to these guys. Just think about it. When you're planning and thinking about the cloud and what services to buy online, and maybe what should you should bring back into house. Just my opinion. Always love to hear from you. Leave your comments. Remember, like our video, plus one it, share it. We always like to hear from you. I'm Bruce Nail, your Frugal Tech. Remember, if it's in your shop, not making you money or saving you money, get it out of there. I'll talk to you later. Take care.